Please welcome to the stage, Mesa Zone, a great guy, and you're gonna find this out, Mr. Russ Ortiz. <laughs> And he still came out. That was awesome. <laughs> now, once you look at the, see, now look, that was obviously photoshopped. You know, I, I just come up with the cards, and then that guy over there plays with them. So, uh, no, very good. Good to have you here, Russ. I appreciate it. It's good Thank to be here. Thank you so much. And that, uh, that was you when you played for the D-backs. Right. One of one of seven major league teams that you played for. Is that correct? Correct. Correct. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what. Um, that just shows how, how in demand you are because teams don't just pick somebody up unless they really want them on their team. So kudos to you. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I would like to think it's, that's, that's the reason why I was on seven teams. So, yeah. <laughs> so I like the way that you put that. Well, because if somebody wasn't good, the first team would let him go and then pretty much people would forget about him like, like uh, Keith Comstock. <laughs> And by the way, Russ, now Russ was a pitcher and a very accomplished pitcher. We're going to get into this. But did you notice that out of those goofy, not yours, but out of the nine other goofy cards, <laughs> like five of them were pitchers. Is there something in a pitcher's DNA that makes them a little strange? I, I think we just have the, the most time uh, there <laughs> to, to lay around know, to, on the grass. To, to waste and, and uh, <laughs> you know, fool around. No, that's awesome. Well, tell us a little bit about uh, early days with Russ Ortiz. Now, where were you born? And... And uh, was baseball always a big part of your life? I was born in Southern California, and baseball has been the, the thing I've always wanted to do since uh, I can remember. It's, it's something that uh, my mom and, and grandpa, they just went out in the front yard and just, you know, played catch with us all the time. And, and there's just something about it that I just loved. And I have an older brother uh, who's only 10 and a half months older, actually. Um, I believe they call it Irish Twins. <laughs> I want to say, um, so we we uh, we were always together playing baseball, growing up, and and uh, it turned out to I got good enough to be able to get a scholarship to the University of Oklahoma, and from there wow. I got drafted by the Giants in '95. So you were a Sooner. Yes. So you so you went from Southern California straight to Norman, Oklahoma. Correct. Yeah. Well, that's a uh, that's a culture that's a big shock. Change. Isn't it? Big change. Big change. Yeah. That's like watching the Beverly Hillbillies in reverse. <laughs> Yeah, it was going from Southern California, you know, movies and music and everything going on. Like it's happening right, right <laughs> as we speak. And you go to Norman, Oklahoma, and everything seems to be about three months yeah. late. And so it was definitely a culture shock, but uh, more my speed. I'm pretty laid back, and so it's more my speed. I think that's kind of why I gravitated towards that. Oh, that's awesome. So, well, you know what, you said that it was always something you wanted to do. I, I think if all these guys in the room are honest, growing up, it's what we always wanted to do. If, you know, when you're growing up, you just, you visualize, man, I'll be, I'm going to be in the major leagues. I'm going to be pitching a big, important game. And for all of us, it's a dream. And for you, you made it happen. So that's, that's awesome. So what takes you, so you're, in, uh, you're a, pitching for Oklahoma, and then is that when the scouts started checking you out? And yeah, Oklahoma, we, we were a very good uh, ball club in 94 my sophomore year we won the national championship oh wow so obviously a lot of people are, are watching a little more and, and especially scouts and going to my junior year I was a number two starter which was a big deal in college they usually only have a, a couple main guys and then um, and then you go on from there but some I, apparently I wasn't pitching good enough uh, I got I, they sat me down I didn't suit up for games at home I'd go out and practice during, during BP and I'd have to change and go sit in the stands and watch the game from the stands. Um, I didn't go on road trips. So for about a month, month and a half, I didn't, I didn't play. Wow. And I, I still, I'll, I'll see them later this month. I, I probably should ask them, but <laughs> I, I really don't, I really never got an explanation why I got sat down like that. No one, no one that I know that wasn't a regular on the team ever got sat down like that. It was guys that just kind of were on the cusp of making the team and everything. So to this day, I still don't know, but ended up, I came back as, as a closer. I was a starter before. I came back as a closer. That's how I got drafted. I got drafted in the fourth round. Um, who now, who drafted closer, you? The Giants. Okay. San Francisco Giants. Well, that's awesome. So you grow up in Southern California, and then you get drafted by probably not the team you followed. You were probably, were you a Dodger fan? And I was more of an Angel fan. All right, all right. Dodgers games were always blacked out, so right, good. We, couldn't, we couldn't follow them. Yeah, I like the Angels. They, <laughs> never, they never peed in our pool. 
Uh, so, okay, so you go, uh, so now you're drafted by the, by the team up north and you, uh, you go to the Dodgers, I mean to the uh, Giants. Right. That's awesome. So, so what was your rookie year like when you're, who's, who's in the clubhouse your, your rookie year when you start going in there? Who are the big, the big guns there? Barry Bonds? There's, yeah, Barry Bonds, Jeff Kent, uh, Danny Darwin, which is, that was his, I believe it was his 20th year. Uh, he was 20 years older than I was uh, at the time, so that was pretty cool to be able to play with somebody that's been around the game that long. I was 23 years old. He was 43, wow. so um, and he's probably in better shape than I was. Uh, <laughs> amazing. Um, other guys we had were, uh, I mean, they were not a huge names. I mean, Barry, Jeff Kent, and uh, were probably the the two biggest names that we that we had, and um, for that for that year, anyways. Well. I I know we can't dissect all your stops too much because we'll run out of time. But so you went from let's see if you can remember where you went. You went from the Giants, right, to Atlanta. I got traded to Atlanta. Okay. Spent two years there, and then I signed here with the Diamondbacks for uh, in 2005 for 2005, and I was here for 05 and half 06, and then went to the Orioles uh, for the last half of 06. Went back to the Giants. In 07, I got hurt, I had uh, elbow surgery, so I missed a full year um, in 2008, and then uh, signed with the, the Astros and made the team there in 2009, and then 2010, I signed with the Dodgers and made the team there. And I only played there about a month. I didn't do very well, and so they wow, what, what uh, kind of patted me on the back and said, you know, thanks for <laughs> thanks for trying, but thanks for stopping by. <laughs> And then they wouldn't let you dress, and you had to go sit in the stands. Forever, <laughs> yeah, for the rest of my life now. No. now but well, now, I'll tell now you what. This, this is my uniform now. So. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're going to talk about that. That's, that's kind of the main reason you're here. Uh, but, but by the way, all, all those stops, all great teams, all great franchises. And, and something I was curious about, you, you were all over the country. Uh, how did you end up in Mesa? What, what made, is your wife from here? Or? My wife's from Norman, Oklahoma. We oh, met okay. in college. She was a volleyball player at, at Oklahoma, so. Well, obviously, we all like Mesa, and, and that's why we're here, but did you guys right. just fall in love with the area? Well, we fell in love with Arizona uh, in general. Well, we had it good because we came to Arizona uh, in October and stayed through April. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so, so for, yeah, for 15 years, Basically, for 15 years, that's that's the weather that we got, you know, except for the times I played here in Arizona. But uh, so obviously the weather was a big factor, and just we just fell in love with it after the first couple of spring trainings, and then we decided to make this our home, and we lived in in Gilbert for a couple of years, and then in 2003 we we had a house built in Mesa, and so from this is our our 10th year here in Mesa. Oh, great. Well, you've made the community better because of uh, what you're doing post-career. I know a lot of ball players never think about what they're going to do when their playing days are over and they kind of flounder around, they're lost, and they get in all kinds of trouble. Tell us about what you're doing because you've gone just the opposite way. Well, I appreciate it. Uh, I started a golf brand called Second Guy Golf. Uh, we have Second Guy Golf and Second Girl Golf, so we're men's and women's golf apparel and accessory company. We sell, we sell shirts basically to help people. We, make, we, you know, we try to design and make the best shirts, the best quality shirts we can, um, and try to do the best job we can to sell as, as many shirts as possible so we can help as many people as possible. And, and the, the, that's at the core of what our, our brand is all about. It's about helping people, giving people a second chance. So we, what we do is we give all of our proceeds to, to charity and to charities and organizations that help give people a second chance at something. And whether it be you know, health, life, home, uh, you know, education, job, all that stuff. And, and that's what we're geared towards. And that's just a, a golf for myself and, and uh, my friend who works with me, LJ. Golf is a, is a passion of ours, but also helping people is a passion of ours. And so we, we just combine the two passions and uh, the idea of second guy golf came up in, in 09 when I was in Houston playing golf and thought it would be a great idea. And after I retired, I thought I was going to run with this and do this. And, and it's more about making shirts. Making shirts is cool and stuff like that, but it's, it's really about helping people. And we use uh, the golf apparel business as a vehicle for us to be able to help that, people. So did you, th that's a beautiful shirt, by the way. And it Thanks. looks good on all body types. We've got a very athletic 
uh, professional <laughs> ball player. I, thank you. And then uh, if you look at Dave, <laughs> You, you see that, you know, you could pretty much cover up anything with that. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? Isn't Give him a second payback? chance at a good body. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's just payback for all the trouble he gives me. I, I love the logo, though. That's very, very good on the hat, and then it's on the back of the shirt. It's, when you say your shirts help people, so um, kind of explain how that, how that works and, and who you've helped. Well, we, we take, like I said, we take all of our proceeds. Yeah. Um, so uh, the, the business, we're a not-for-profit business. Uh, it's, and basically what that means is any, I don't take anything from, from this. I played long enough in, in baseball. Yeah, and, you did pretty well. And did, did pretty well. Um, and so when I thought about what I want to do after baseball, uh, I wanted to have a huge purpose. And, and so when this came along, it's like, this is the thing that I love to do. I love to help people. I've always been involved in communities where we played in, and uh, I love golf, and so that's why I say we combine in the two passions. And so, uh, so I just said, let's give all of our proceeds away. And uh, when I was thinking about how can we really impact, well, we can give part of our proceeds, all that stuff, but what's going to make the biggest impact? And this is, let's give all of our proceeds. That's going to make a bigger impact than just giving a percentage away. And, um, and then this way, when I wake up in the mornings, I know that this has a real huge purpose. And that's what gets me excited, and that's what get, gets LJ excited, is just the fact that what we're doing uh, is going to make a lot of difference, and a big difference in a lot of people's lives. And you told me uh, that LJ, your, your buddy in this, the guy that helps you, he's got a business background. He was with Discount Tire, which is an unbelievable success story right from here in the Valley. So it's good that you aligned yourself with someone that, that also knows what your, your passion and your vision is and uh, making good things happen. Right. What kind of charities have you helped? Uh, uh, the biggest one we helped this year was Phoenix Children's Hospital, their cancer and blood disorder center. We helped provide lunches for the kids that go in for their treatments. Uh, so that was, a, that was a really cool partnership. And, and right now uh, we're looking for other organizations. Uh, we have a couple in mind. And, but we've, we've sponsored some golf tournaments, some charity golf tournaments. Uh, that are helping, that are hoping to fundraise for, for their causes, and we've been able to be sponsors and donated items and, and things for their auctions and, and, and raffles and, and stuff, stuff like that. So we we kind of been doing a, a little bit here and there, and uh, we're we're trying to focus on one or two big things that that we you know we want to do. And, Very cool. Um, yeah, one of the cool things is our women's line woman that comes out in the spring. Uh, we'll be helping a uh, an organization. It's actually a ministry in the Philippines called Josie's Angels that um, they they rescue girls from dangerous situations there in the what they call it, like the squatter village area and and uh, there's a they have a home um, and they have they can uh, house up to 80 girls and right now they have about 50 uh, that they've rescued out and um, so it's a it's a pretty cool deal it's, um, we my wife and I've been over there a couple of times and been able to see it. So that will be coming up uh, as, as far as the, on the women's side. So all of our women's shirts, uh, all, all those proceeds will be going to there. Very cool. A uh, couple of baseball-related questions, if right. you don't mind. Um, would be crazy to have him here and not <laughs> pick his brain a little bit. Uh, we're down to the final four in baseball. Right. We've got the Dodgers versus the um, Cardinals in the National League. And then in the American League, we got the, um, the Red Sox and the uh, Tigers. Tigers. Okay, who's going to win those series? Uh, in the National League, the Dodgers will win, um, yeah. mainly based off of their, their pitching. Yeah. Um, well, great great pitcher, hitting, you know. Pitcher, you great, pitch, great pitching beats great hitting. Yeah, so. Well, the Diamondbacks proved that in 0-1. So. <laughs> yeah, 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 I mean, it's just, you know, you, you can't, you, you, you know, the best uh, offense is a, is a great defense. You know, I mean, that's true in, in baseball. I mean, when you have strong pitchers, uh, you, and so that's what the Dodgers have. They have okay. great hitting too. But and then and then the American League, I believe that the the Tigers will win same, for the same reason. But their offensive side, I mean, they pretty much have the best hitter in the game. Yeah. Not, and so as Cabrera. long as he's healthy, yeah, and Miguel Cabrera, and as long as he's healthy, um, I, I think they'll win. And so I think you have the the Tigers versus the Dodgers, and I think uh, I think the Dodgers end up end up winning the whole thing. So. What do you guys think about that? Are you happy about that? <laughs> well, I, I didn't say I liked it either. It's just, it's just my opinion. Well, you don't know what you're talking about, Russ. 
you only played for 12 <laughs> leagues in the 12 years in the major leagues. No, good for you. You're probably right. It's a, it's a, it'll, be a, it'll be great gear, games, and they start tonight, so that's cool. Right. Um, okay, in the 12 years you played, who was the one guy that you didn't want the batters by? The one guy you just thought, man, I can't get this guy out. Well, oddly enough, I was telling LJ this the other day, one of the guys is Juan Uribe that oh, hit the, the game-winning home run for the Dodgers. For some reason, just I can't get him out. And so there's, there's a couple like that. One of the Diamondbacks players, Tony Womack, he was another guy. Really? Just for some reason. So there's a few guys that just you just can't get them out no matter what you throw, nothing. And, and uh, so those are the guys I hated facing. It wasn't necessarily the big guys or, yeah. you know, all that. It was, it was more just certain. I, there were just certain guys that I just did not want to face. Plus, once Womack got on, you had to worry about him stealing. stealing. Yeah, yeah. yeah he was Hitting runs and all that stuff. So, it, yeah, he, he caused a lot of havoc. Who was the best, uh, well, and then I gotta ask the flip side, but we'll start with, who was the best teammate you ever had? The guy that you thought, you know what? This guy is playing for all the right reasons. He's, uh, he's my go-to guy. If you were gonna manage a team, you'd start with him. That's a good question. Um, no, I'm, I was kind of proud of that. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you said your writers were on. Or, uh, my comedy writers were on oh, furlough. Okay. But, <laughs> um, well, I'll, I'll do it this way. I played with the Giants the longest, so I got to play with a guy named Kirk Reeder uh, with the Giants, left-handed starting pitcher, uh, had a great career, very solid his whole career. Uh, I played with Montreal and then uh, the Giants, and he's probably one of the best teammates. That's like you talked about, playing for the right reasons, right. playing with the passion and the heart that you want to see, a uh, great role model for kids, uh, and just a great overall, uh, great uh, teammate. Um, as, as far as like when I went to the to the Braves and, and and all through that, I mean, just a couple of guys. Paul Bird is, is one of them. Same thing. Just the passion he has for the game. John Smoltz is actually a great teammate, uh, starter and closer. Great pitcher. Yeah, he'll be in the Hall of Fame here here soon. Um, and uh, gosh, right. I mean, it, it's like just that? yeah, it's, it's hard because I mean, there's little things about you know guys that just. Who was the, this will probably be easier. The worst teammate? Who was the worst teammate you ever I'll had? Give, Chances I'll, are he's not up watching this. Yeah, I'll give, I mean, I think, I'll, you know, I can give everybody one guess, you know. <laughs> um, but uh, I know everybody wants me to say Barry Bonds, but, um, you know, that's, that's, that's hard. I don't, I, quite honestly, I, I think I was just really blessed to say that I never played with anybody that I absolutely, like, I can't stand that guy. Oh, that's You cool. know, so, I mean, it's, you know. Um, I, well, I think everybody asked me about Barry and stuff, but he, you know, we we talked quite a bit about regular stuff and baseball stuff, and so um, you know. But he, I mean, he was kind of his own deal. Who was the best manager you ever played for? Dusty Baker. Really? Yeah. And yeah. There's a guy that's. Uh, I think he's he's possibly lose his job, right? Or did he get he fired? He, he got did fired. Get, yeah. Just got fired. Yeah. Uh, he got fired, and the stuff I was reading is just, he was just. He said if, if they were wanting to fire the hitting coach, and he said, if, you know, if you're going to fire anybody, fire me. You know, this is my team and, and all that. And so they fired him. Um, Did he say, well, I was just kind of kidding about that? So <laughs> apparently, no. Uh, so he, uh, but the, the thing about him is that, that was really cool about the Giants is that uh, Dusty uh, allowed all the kids to come in the clubhouse. And, and if everybody knows, in 2002, his son was almost, the got, run over. almost got run over. J.T. Snow basically saved his life, maybe, you know. But uh, and so, but that's he ran it to where it's like he wanted family around. He knew my wife's name. He knew my kid's name. He knew my mom's name, my brother, all that stuff. And it was the same with every other other player. Wow. And so that's just the kind of man that he he is. And uh, and the, he he's a great motivator. Very smart, very smart, and he, <clears throat> excuse me, he, he knew how to talk to everybody uh, on their level. So if, if there was a guy that, that uh, had had like a trouble pass or whatever, Dusty had a trouble pass, so he knew how to talk to him. If there was some guy that just, uh, you know, has, has a great marriage, he's able to talk to that guy just about like, you know, what, what's helped. So, I mean, he knew, he knew how to talk to a guy on, at their level. And he did everybody... Treat everybody as men, and yeah. that was the thing, is he treated everybody as men, and he had very little rules. It you just... know, there's a little takeaway, because a lot of you guys have your own business. You know, think about it. Uh, your team, can you say the same thing about all your, all your employees or the people that work with you, you know? So take, uh, 
take it from a guy who played for a lot of, a lot of managers, um, those, those things matter. Um, any questions for Russ? And by the way, I got a, qu a couple questions for Russ. Um, just for a little Russ Ortiz trivia. Okay. And you don't, he didn't know I'm going to ask you this. Uh, do you know what your career record was? I'm going to say. And if you get within a couple. I'm going to say 113 and 78. Wow. Well, you were, you were right on the 113, 89. Okay. See, that's, that's the mark of a good player. He kind of forgot some of those. <laughs> what was your career ERA? Oh, that's not good. Uh, <laughs> Actually, it's pretty darn good. Uh, it's four something. Yeah, four, four, four and a half. Four and a half. Yeah. And how many strikeouts did you have? Uh, not, not when you were swinging the bat, but when you were throwing the ball. Uh, <laughs> I didn't want him to say uh, all of them. Um, I'm going to say 1,190. 1192. That's uh, it's like every great golfer can remember every <laughs> stroke he ever had. That's that's pretty impressive. And by the way, Russ is too uh, too modest to mention this, but you're a heck of a golfer. What, what's your handicap these days? I'm a one handicap. One hand. Wow. Yeah, so so uh, that's a warning. Do not play him for money. <laughs> uh, did you just win the uh, championship at uh, our team? The second guy golf team won the. Um, the Mesa Chamber of Commerce Tournament. Oh, awesome. And you, so, and you also had the shirts? We yeah, have, we're also a shirt supplier the for the tournament. The shirt supplier for and, the chamber? Yeah, this, this, this exact shirt. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Very cool. Hope well, you know what? Um, I know we're a little, little pinched for time, but I, uh, I, gosh, I'd feel bad if I'd. Oh, we've got a question in the back? Mr. George Bliss. Russ, uh, what was it like pitching in the World Series? Uh, unbelievable. You mentioned about, you know, us dreaming of, about that as, as kids, and that's exactly what I did. My brother and I, we'd play, and we'd imagine we were in the World Series in the biggest game of your life and in the most crucial situation. Uh, so when I got to pitch in the, in the World Series, it was kind of one of those things where I just thought to myself, I was like, this is what you actually do dream about as a, as a kid sure. that we dreamed about. And so it was one of the most unbelievable experiences ever. It's the greatest baseball experience I've, I've had. And um, I got to pitch twice. One of the games was terrible, uh, but I got another opportunity, a second chance, you know, to add it again. That's great. And came back in game six and probably pitched one of the best games I've ever thrown. And so that was that's something I'm really proud of, the, to be able to do that. And, and the biggest stage, you know, to realize you're the last two teams of the season to play and be able to be a part of that is pretty special. That is awesome, yeah. Well, um, we could talk for a long time because you've got a great story with all the teams, all the places you've been, all the players you played with and, and managers you played for. But I'll just sum it up if I can. I don't know Russ that well, but I know, uh, I know enough to say you're a man of great faith, you're a great community man. You live right here. You make Mesa a better place to live. You're doing great sure. things. You know, he's a young man. He's uh, 38, 39 years old. I'll be 40 in June. He'll yeah. be 40 in June, so uh, I think that makes him 39. <laughs> he's, he's, he's got a lot of years left on the planet, and they're going to be productive. He's doing great stuff. And uh, boy, if everybody that, get, that played in the major leagues came out with your attitude, uh, we wouldn't pick up the sports page and, and read a bunch of stuff that we don't like to hear about our heroes. So thanks for being a hero to uh, people that watch you to play, and thanks for being a hero for kids that are being born and you're helping them out right now. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, how about a big round of applause, Mr. Russ Ortiz.